Hello, vets. Happy Wednesday. Thank you for spending your time with us today. So before we get started, sound off in the comments. Let us know where you're from and what branch you served and what years. I'm Coach John Luna. I am an Air Force veteran of 10 years. I've been with VA Claims Insider now for going on three years. And uh, I'm here today with uh, Coach Chuck Daniels. Hey, John. Glad to be here with you today. How you doing? Doing pretty good, sir. Good, good. Doing? <clears throat> doing well. So my name's Coach Chuck Daniels. I'm a 26-year Army veteran. And uh, we got some great topics to discuss with you all today here. Um, PTSD, we're going to be talking about um, the three types today. And, and um, so I hope everybody, we'll give everybody a chance here to get logged in and join us. And like John said, go ahead and put put in the comments there where you're uh, where you're joining us from, what branch you serve, the years that you served, and we can give you all some shout outs here. Yeah, we'll give it a few minutes. We'll say hi to you guys, and then we'll get started on the topic. Welcome, Deborah. Well, at least we got one watching today. Hi, Deborah. <clears throat> so just a brief, uh, brief description of what we do. So uh, at VA Claims Insider, we help out vets with their uh, disability claims. So if you need help with your VA disability claims, if you've been stuck being denied, uh, we're here to help. So you sign up for um, getting help with a coach. They can go through, see what is the most viable claims to go after. If you've been getting denied for a claim, we'll see if that claim is worth pursuing. Maybe it's a claim that's not worth pursuing, but we see something else that's more viable to go after. So when you sign up for VA Claims Insider, uh, you get uh, pretty much a team to, to help you out through the process. It could be an overwhelming, uh, an overwhelming uh, thing to go through but you you definitely have a lot of experience when you sign up here absolutely absolutely thanks for that john i see a lot of navy vets in here this, this morning or afternoon or wherever you may be located um we got the big army navy game coming up so i'm sure people are starting to get pumped up for that um but yeah like john said being an elite member here at va claims insider is definitely worth it you have those scheduled strategy sessions with your assigned coach that you get assigned to um, kind of help with claim submissions. We don't do them for you. However, we do kind of help coach you through that process so that you make sure that it's submitted right. Lots of classes um, that you can join as a VACI elite member as well. Have weekly classes, the Facebook live classes. We also have a new Spanish um, Facebook live class too that happens once a month. So um, that's been pretty successful. So hopefully, uh, any Spanish speakers out there that want to jump onto that one, by all means, feel free to sign up for that as well. Yep. We're an online company, but we, we definitely have a very, uh, large community of, uh, of veterans. So you not only get, uh, help from us, but you get a community of other veterans that are in the process as well. Sometimes these, uh, veterans that already went through the process, like to help out and give advice to uh, other veterans that are, are still in the middle of it. So you really get a lot when you sign up here. You get you get uh, a coach, you get other veterans who have already gone through the process with uh, our uh, Facebook groups, and you just have a lot of uh, a lot of value coming into this. You get strategies, you get, um, you know, if you get a denial, we can look at those denials to see if it was a good denial or it was a bad denial appeal that so you get you get a lot of uh, really good value when you come into into this program <clears throat> yeah and i've learned a lot even myself through you know the classes that we do offer each week um three times a day the coffee with coaches is is another big one that we do every single morning um with veterans as well and sometimes man like some of the experiences and stuff that they may go through during their CMP exams. Um, there was a good one a couple of days ago um, where a vet was talking about the CMP exam he had. Um, it was eye opening. It was a great, you know, a great tool for the other veterans on the, on that call to kind of listen to mm -hmm. um, and, and gain some experience and knowledge from that stuff. So like John said, it's a, there's a lot that we do offer. Um, you can sign up for that free discovery call. Um, through VA Claims Insider and kind of um, do that 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 initial call there and, and kind of see if that's something that, that you're interested in us helping you out with. So 
we appreciate everybody joining this morning, taking your time. I know everybody's busy. Um, we got a good topic today. We're talking about three types of PTSD. Um, so hopefully, you know, we'll answer some questions for you all at the end as well. So if any of y'all have questions, we probably won't get to every single question that's, that's asked. However, um, you can see the link there that's put in the chat um, with the blog that we're going to be going through today as well. So um, that's a really good tool asset that we do have. It's free too, right? You can just go to vaclaimsinsider.com. At the top, it says um, for veterans by veterans. Click on that for veterans. You'll see a drop down. Click on the blog. And there's so much information there. Um, and it's free too. So take advantage of that stuff. Yes, sir. Yep. Welcome, Daryl, John, Nicole, Joe, Joe, nice to see you, Mark, Thomas. So, uh, yeah, today's topic of uh, the three types of PTSD. So there's three types that the VA can uh, can recognize. There's combat hey, John, PTSD. Hey, before we get started, let's let's uh, read off that disclaimer real quick. You want to? Sure. We're not accredited agents, VSOs, attorneys, or any other entity recognized by the Department of Veterans Affairs, and we are not affiliated with the VA in any way. VA Claims Insider is an education-based coaching consulting company for disabled veterans exploring eligibility for increased VA disability benefits and for the, those who wish to learn more about that process. VA Claims Insider also connects veterans with vetted independent medical professionals in our referral network for medical examinations and independent medical opinions for a wide range of disability conditions. <clears throat> Awesome. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sir. But yeah, we're going to be talking about PTSD. So the three types of PTSD that they recognize is combat, non-combat, and military sexual trauma, also called MST. So this is a, a pretty uh, deep and sometimes emotionally jarring conversation to talk about, but it's something that should be spoken about because it, it definitely affects a lot of veterans' lives. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's one thing too, when I, when I get a new vet um, that comes to me as a client here at VA Claims Insider, as I'm kind of browsing through the documents and stuff that they upload to me to review prior to us meeting for that strategy session, um, that's one thing I do look at, right, is the DD-214, mm -hmm. um, looking at those, those uh, awards, um, recognize that they deployed to Iraq, Afghanistan, OEF, OIF. Um, and that's, that's kind of what I like to discuss with them if, if they haven't been rated for, for that yet, because it is a high value claim, but also I feel like a lot of vets kind of steer away from it, you know, and it's, it's one of those things that, you know, it's hard to talk about most definitely hard to talk about. Um, but, but sometimes I try to, you know, build that relationship with them, get them to open up to me a little bit, because it is something that that I feel like I think it's gotten better over time. I think a lot of the, a lot of the more old schooler vets, you know, back in the, the 60s, 70s, 80s, don't talk about it as much as, as probably now um, with the new generation of, of soldiers and Marines and airmen getting out of the service, talk about it now. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a high value claim and can be rated um, up to 100%, you know, with breaks at 0, 30, 50, and 70. So depending on, the severity of your symptoms and things like that, that's kind of what determines that final overall rating that you, that you're awarded through the VA. So um, that's, that's one thing I can like to hit on right off the, right off the bat, you know, and it is sensitive um, to talk about, but most definitely um, needs to be done for sure. Yeah, I could definitely say, and probably Chuck, you've also seen this too. There's a couple of barriers that some veterans have with wanting to talk about that. Sometimes they just don't know how to talk about what's been, what they know has been bugging them for some time. Sometimes there's some popular misconceptions, like if you try to go after PTSD, will they take your your weapons away? So I yeah. say that that's one of the biggest ones that uh, I come across, and um, you know. There is a line that the VA will notice if you are an active threat to yourself or to someone else, that's when the VA will step in. But if you are dealing with PTSD, um, depression and anxiety, but you're not posing a risk, you are allowed to still have a weapon. So just throwing that out there to all the veterans. I know that that's a very um, popular misconception that's preventing you from seeking the help that you definitely need for that condition. So not right. only the help, but also the compensation that goes uh, for that. 
So don't let that be a barrier. Talk to somebody, use that discovery call, ask all the questions you want and see if that's something that's been um, been troubling you. Like I, I've helped out Vietnam era veterans who have never spoken about their mental health until they signed up with us. And it's really, um, it's really eye opening for them when they really start to come to terms with everything that they've been through and connecting the dots of why they came back, why they decided to start drinking, doing drugs, uh, been through three or four marriages. Like it wasn't discussed back then. And then uh, with all the information coming out, there are veterans from that era, from Desert Storm that are starting to connect their own dots of realizing like, I've been dealing with something because of, you know, um, the explosions I went through of uh, being under fire. And yeah, it, it's, it's been an, uh, a very eye-opening experience, a life-changing experience, getting the help that they finally need. Right. And it's, um, you know, sometimes those types of claims, right? Sometimes I feel like, you know, helping vets through, you know, whether it's PTSD combat, non-combat, MST, whatever the, whatever the situation is, right? Sometimes it's just knowing and understanding how to file the claim properly, right? Because sometimes, you know, I'll go back and I'll, and I'll see some vets that maybe filed for PTSD that were, you know, an infantry guy deployed, you know, to Afghanistan, Iraq, whatever, right? And, and went through a lot of things, you know, whether it's Vietnam or, or the first Gulf War or um, whatever the case might be. And, and I see those not service connected, right, on there. Um, and a lot of times it's because it wasn't, quite filed correctly, right? Using the PTSD stressor form, right? And that's that's huge. That's key um, to, to file in your PTSD claim. There's a specific, you know, 0781 form that you have to fill out that lists out the stressor events that happened to you. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I'll see that in the denial letters where it'll break it down, you know, um, talking about that stressor event that happened to them. And, that, and probably the vet just didn't quite know or understand what he needed to fill out in order to make that claim successful. So sometimes I'll just go back and we'll do a, a new supplemental claim um, and fill out that PTSD stressor event form, resubmit it, and then we're successful. So, you know, that's one thing that, that I have noticed quite often, you know, on some of the older vets that maybe filed for it back then that, that maybe we're not service connected, but that doesn't mean that you can't go back and you can't file another PTSD form, whether it's a, an HLR, a supplemental claim. Um, and, and that's where your coach is going to come into to play, right? Because your coach has that experience and, and knowing what the VA is looking for based on that decision letter that you receive, right? So um, make sure you take advantage, you know, go to our um, link there that's in the chat. Um, sign up for, for VA Claims Insider. That way you have access to your own coach. You'll have access to all the, the uh, elite member content that you that you need. Um, so, you know, we're looking forward to it. Um, I was an elite member here at VA Claims Insider before I was hired on here as a coach. And I can tell you, it's a confusing process. It, it really is. And especially if you haven't really filed claims in the past on your own, um, you know, a lot of vets do um, file them on their own and are successful. Um, but, you know, once you get to that certain level, whether it's 70 percent, 80 percent, 90 percent, it just seems like it gets harder and harder the higher up you go. Um, but like I said, the, the coach that you get when you just sign up with VA Claims Insider as an elite member has a wealth of knowledge and experience to kind of help guide you and, and hopefully get you to that goal, right? Um, you're all deserving of it. We all served. Um, you deserve. Make sure you check out, if you haven't yet, Brian's Brian's book as well um, is something that's amazing that has a great amount of information in it. So um, looking forward to it. If you haven't signed up yet, be sure to do it. If you're unsure, you know, do that discovery call, that free 30 minute discovery call as well, because, you know, once you make that phone call, you can kind of see if this is a fit for you or not. Yeah. So with combat PTSD, we'll start off with that one. Combat PTSD usually revolves like when you're in a life threatening situation. A lot of times you see infantry, um, infantry in that, uh, you know, if you had a weapon, if you were 
um, being shot at direct fire. Um, combat PTSD could happen like over over the course of like doing several convoys, being in different uh, firefights. You know, those are what's called um, uh, stressor events. So if you had to do a whole bunch of convoys um, in Iraq and, you know, IEDs were going off, you were getting shot at, those are stressor events that can be um, recognized by the VA. Typically, like if you look, if they uh, look at your orders, they see what uh, MOS you were in, um, the sort of job that you were doing, they, they can retrieve that information in their systems and verify that uh, that's something that uh, happened to you. So um, a lot of times some people will have questions about like, how, how do I get PTSD? Like, how do I get it service connected? So the first thing to do is verify that you had a credible stressor event on active duty. And for combat PTSD, you had to have been in a combat uh, deployment. Uh, for non-combat, that one's a little bit uh, different. So I have non-combat PTSD. I was in Kirkuk, Iraq in 2007, where uh, mortars were an everyday uh, occurrence. So when I got service connected is because I was always uh, having to go under um, under alert because we were getting attacked by mortars that day and you know not sleeping for for several days on end because of all the sirens all the explosions the anxiety you know that would be considered a non uh non-combat another uh non-combat uh ptsd you don't even have to be deployed or in a combat zone for non-combat ptsd if something happened to you stateside if you got into a car accident that was traumatic enough that uh, you are still struggling with anxieties and flashbacks of that event that could be um, connected as non-combat PTSD. So if that happened to you on active duty, if you had something that happened where um, you got into a car accident, maybe mortuary affairs. Mortuary affairs, you have to be around a lot of uh, human remains. That could be very traumatic for some people. So um, PTSD is not solely isolated to people that saw combat. PTSD can happen to people that um, never been in a combat zone in the military. So there's a pretty wide range. MST, military sexual trauma, that happens stateside or deployed. If uh, you were in the military and military uh, sexual trauma occurred, either way, that is also something that the VA can recognize. Yeah, one good thing that, that you brought up there, John, um, you know, back to the combat um, PTSD, right? <clears throat> I think a lot of times, too, and you see this a lot with um, – with a lot of guard reserve folks too that may be deployed, right? Um, they do a lot of, of cross training and, and things into other MOSs, right? So sometimes that DD-214 doesn't necessarily reflect maybe what they did while they were deployed, right? So I, I have seen a few instances where maybe um, the NGB-22 or the DD-214 showed like that they were um, maybe in in administration or something, but the unit that they were in cross-trained to be military police officers and things like that, uh, where maybe they were doing convoys and things like that. Um, so there may be a little discrepancy there, you know, on the 214 when they go to file that combat and the VA is looking at it like, well, that's kind of weird because it shows, you know, you were an administrative assistant or whatever the case was, right? Um, so I have seen that a few times. And I think um, sometimes, you know, if you do a, a really good statement of support of claim, you talk about that, you know, whether it was reserve or guardian that you were in that cross trained into, you know, I had a lot of buddies of mine um, that were in the, in the guard um, that were artillery guys and they cross trained almost that whole unit to military policemen. Right. And then they mm -hmm. were sent on convoy escorts and things like that um, ran into IEDs and such. So you know, sometimes you'll see a little discrepancy there, but that's something to kind of keep in mind um, because I did have a few vets that that were in that same kind of scenario and and they just wrote it out and kind of explained it all in a, in a statement of support on how they were cross trained to this or that specific MOS. And, and when they deployed, that's what they were doing and not necessarily the the um, MOS that was reflected on the 214. So just a tip. One thing I, I was thinking about also. Um, you know, when you when you talk about the non-combat stuff, um, there's a lot of different things like John kind of hit on, you know, vehicle accidents, training accidents, maybe accidents um, that might have happened at a range or something that you witnessed. Mm -hmm. 
um, natural disasters. Um, I had a vet that was over in Japan stationed over there during the tsunami. Um, oh, wow. And yeah, he was, it was crazy, man. He was telling me all about it. And I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. you know, most definitely, you know, you should file for a PTSD non-combat claim, you know, for witnessing all that destruction and stuff that happened over there. So there's a lot of, you know, quite a few things, you know, a lot of things also that I, I kind of hear from vets um, are like maybe, um, you know, plane crashes or something, you know, that happened in the military that they responded to as a firefighter or law enforcement officer um, I did have a vet that was out at sea um, that crashed into another ship out there and it was chaos. Um, so things like that, you know, it, PTSD is a, a big wide range of different things, right? Um, so when you're talking about combat versus non-combat versus MST, um, there's a lot of different things. And that's kind of where your coach is going to kind of come in and help you um, when you sign up with the VA Claims Insider because it is and, – and, and a good way to think about it, right, no matter what the diagnosis is, whether it's, you know, whether you have PTSD from, from combat or non-combat or military sexual trauma, you know, the symptoms are pretty much what the VA is looking at you know, regardless of, of what what that, you know, kind of claim you filed or looking at those mental health symptoms that you have. So it's really important that, that you know, you know and understand those 31 mental health symptoms and that you open up and you're vulnerable and you talk about those things. And I get it, man. It's hard. It was the hardest thing that I went through, um, at least the toughest claim that I, that I filed for myself was that mental health claim. And to open up and talk about it, man, it was hard. It was hard, but you know what? I knew I had to do it. I survived it. I'm still here. I'm on this, this Facebook live call with you. But I can tell you it is hard. And, and your coach, um, when you sign up with us here at VA Claims Insider, your coach is going to be there for you every step of the way. And not like John said earlier, not, not only your coach, but we have a plethora of knowledge in this company, right? We have senior veteran coaches, the coaches, the BDRs, everybody has all this knowledge. Um, so not only are you going to get that, that coach's input on your specific um, claim, but, but you also have the ability to elaborate with other coaches inside of our classes that we offer as a, as an elite member. So you're going to get a wealth of knowledge, not only from coaches, but the senior veteran coaches, um, other veterans that are on the call that have gone through the process um, with different tips and tricks to, to make it through a successful, you know, PTSD claim. So, you know, I'm excited. This is uh, this company is has opened my eyes. And, and to be straight honest with you, John, I didn't even know VA Claims Insider existed. I really didn't. I, I retired in, in 2015 and tried to do a few things on my own because I was lost. I didn't know what I was doing. I walked into the VA, told them, you know, what I was there for. And they pointed me down this hallway. And I just happened to mosey into the DAV office um, that was inside the VA and uh, sit down with a, a woman there for 15 minutes, gave her my stuff and I left. I didn't have mm -hmm. a clue what I was doing, you know, and I think for the most part, <laughs> That's probably yeah, it's a very true. relatable story. Same yeah. thing happened to me. I yeah, no, I was denied. Yeah. I was denied too. Like going back to what you're saying, like it's not easy like, to talk about what's going on, both because sometimes it could be difficult or because you don't know how to. Like I feel very um, humbled by veterans who I'm the person that they open up to. They won't open up to their That's their right. spouses, their, their friends, their family. Um, when you sign up here, you get veterans that also deal with uh, mental health, um, just like me and Chuck and or other uh, coaches that are um, that live with a veteran that has mental health um, service connections. And we can relate. We can empathize. It's a safe place to talk about anything. And we, we've all um, seen and been a part of some of the worst of the worst when it comes to PTSD, like whether it's combat, non-combat or MST, um, you know, 
we deal with suicidal thoughts. We've dealt with um, having chemical dependencies like alcohol, drugs, whatnot. Like, and you know, we manage to rise above that so we can help you guys out. Sometimes we still struggle with uh, with those uh, conditions because you know, ultimately, it uh, it can change through life. Sometimes it might stay the same in terms of frequency. If you find out a healthy way to manage your condition, you can stay and keep yourself in a good place. So that's another thing that you get when you sign up here is you won't, you will uh, get the recognition and uh, the financial assistance that you deserve, but you also start learning how to lead a better life. Because PTSD, whether uh, whatever caused it, can pretty much like destroy your life. Like I know when I came back, I was living, living in my car for a few months because nowhere felt like home. And it was just so disorienting. And a lot of vets, you know, unfortunately, a lot of homeless vets uh, that deal with mental health issues, they, uh, they need that help to try to get them back on track. And uh, here you can get that, uh, that empathetic ear where we understand, we can relate. That's right. That's right. And I think, um, you know, VA Claims Insider is, is probably one of the, the closest knitted families, you know, and, and I spent oh, yeah, six years so. in the Army mm -hmm. and, and was in several different units, but I've never felt this close to a group of veterans um, in my lifetime. Um, it's something out of the, the ordinary, right? And I think that everybody here at VA Claims Insider deeply cares about all veterans. And when you come to VA Claims Insider, that's exactly what you're going to get. And I tell you what, um, I've had a few, you know, and keep in mind, you know, the, the MST, the military sexual trauma piece, you know, that that relates to to both men and women. You mm -hmm. know, it, it does. And, and I've had a few of those um, claims and helped veterans through those claims. And, you know, sometimes it's hard, you know, to get them to open up. And, and I had a, a couple of female vets that, that kind of were in the same boat and were looking to claim, you know, PTSD, MST. And keep in mind that, you know, MST, you know, is, is military sexual trauma and can be sexual harassment, can be stalking, can be um, sexual assault. It can be lots of different things, right? And, you know, people don't want to open up that that can of worms and relive that kind of stuff when they're when they're talking to you, right? But I think here at VA Claims Insider, we've got such a great organization and a great group of people that that work here and serve our veterans. And you know, if it's something that you know um, you're not comfortable talking to with your specific coach that you're assigned to, right? We have lots of, of female coaches, right? And sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of like to open that up to to the vet when they first come to me, if that's if that's the the route that we're going with their claim that, hey, if you feel more comfortable, you know, speaking with a, you know, a female coach or whatnot, hey, let's get you transferred over to them, you know, and if that gets you to open up more about it and talk about it, we want you to feel as, as comfortable as we can make you feel right, but also be uncomfortably vulnerable and talk about those things that, that happened to you. So, you know, it, it's a, it's a great organization. You know, when you talk about MST, right. Um, and, and things that the, that the VA sort of looks for um, because sometimes it doesn't always get reported, right. You just kind of live with it. You kind of try to make well, it. You don't even know you have it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So there's different things that, you know, you may, you may not know that happened during your service time that maybe is a marker um, for the VA to recognize when it comes to proving that MST. And if that means like um, going to, to see a chaplain or chaplain notes from when you were in a unit where you went and talked to the chaplain or counseling services that you went to while you were in the service, um, police reports, um, roommates maybe that you had that, that write a buddy letter for you, things like that, a, a diary, notes. A lot of times people, I think, um, not me, I'm not one of those, but a lot of people do like diaries, right? And they mm -hmm. write things down to kind of help them through, um, you know, journals or whatever that they write in. 
that's all good things that you can kind of revert back to if, if you still have those types of things. But, you know, a lot of markers when it comes to that, that type of MST um, is change in work performance, right? You know, maybe he was a great, maybe he was a great soldier, airman, marine, whatever. Something happened to you, you know, military sexual trauma wise, and then your uh, performance starts to change, right? Well, they can go back and look at that and, and say, oh, well, right here when they said that this happened, we can kind of see some things, whether they requested like a new duty assignment to get out of that specific unit. Maybe the perpetrator or whatever was still in that unit and they were trying to get out. Um, and pregnancy tests, things like that, that maybe you had done during that time um, that the event happened to you. So, you know, there are things out there. Um, maybe, you know, if you were sexually assaulted, things like that, any type of um, sexually transmitted disease test that maybe you went and had done or they did for you if you went to the, to the um, emergency room and things like that. So those are all kind of types of markers that, that the VA kind of looks for um, when those types of claims are, are filed. So, you know, keep in mind that, you know, sometimes I think that, that that's maybe kind of like, well, nothing happened. I didn't do anything. Nothing was done about it. Well, you can probably go back and kind of see those things that were happening during your military service time when that happened, you know? So that's a good thing to kind of keep in mind too. Yeah, there's, and we're not going to sugarcoat it. Sometimes it could be very difficult uh, if if it went unreported. There could be evidence of a paper trail, um, like Chuck was saying, where you kept requesting uh, a change of duty station, maybe going AWOL, uh, a lot of performance issues. Maybe you were acting out, like displaying uh, symptoms of PTSD already. Some of those symptoms can come out in terms of like uh, uh, developing drinking problems, um, showing up late for work because you're not sleeping, uh, being very aggressive with coworkers and being written up for it. So if there's a paper trail that they can see based on that, then there could be some, some chance of getting that, getting that recognized. Yeah, absolutely. And, and a lot of times too, you know, when you, when you go looking at, at filing claims, right, you kind of, you know, for at least for PTSD and pretty much any claim, right. <clears throat> you have to have a diagnosis of whatever it is that you're, you're trying to mm -hmm. claim, right. Um, the stressor event occurred or you have a nexus, right, that ties it together. So, you know, we have a, a you know, a great um, company that we refer vets over to that maybe need nexus letters or diagnoses and things like that. I use them when I file my claim um, because the whole time that I was in the service, I didn't go to the doctor. Um, not only was it kind of looked down upon if you went to sick call, right, whereas... Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's different now, which is a great thing. I think the the new generation of, of our, our troops, you know, do go to the doctor more often and get things reported and put in their medical records and things like that, which is outstanding. However, I think a lot of times back, you know, in 60s, 70s, 80s, early 90s, people just didn't go to the doctor. You didn't want to get labeled as that weak guy in the unit. Oh, he's going on sick call or you know, he don't want to do this. So he's, he's going to go to the, to the doctor or whatever the case. Right. So I was, I kind of grew up in that era and I didn't go to sick call. I didn't report things because I was scared that I was going to get in trouble because I went to sick call. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and you just kind of sucked it up and you toughed it out and, and you didn't go to the doctor. And that's kind of what you got to do these days. Right. You have to have a diagnosis. So what I did was, you know, in my specific case myself, um, was went through Telemedica and had a, a mental health evaluation done, um, you know, for myself. And then that's what I used as evidence when I filed that claim. So it was it was a great process, you know, and I, I think sometimes, you know, vets may not know which direction they need to go, but that's, hey, that's where your coach is going to come into play. So when you join, you know, when you sign up with VA Claims Insider and you get assigned that coach, um, and, and maybe you don't have the diagnosis for the PTSD. Maybe you don't have the diagnosis for um, the mental health claim that you're trying to file or whatever it is, right? That's where your coach is going to come in, get you referred over to the right people. You can always go to your own doctor too and, and get that diagnosis. But always keep in mind, you got to have that connection, right? You have to have the connection to have that successful claim. So, you know, we're here for you guys. 
Um, hopefully, you know, if you haven't checked us out, make sure you at least, at least at a bare minimum, do that discovery call, that 30 minute discovery call. It's free. Okay. You don't have to, to pay for anything, but just make it and, and see if this company is something that, that, you know, is something you're interested in and if, if we can work for you, right? Sometimes, you know, we, like, like you said earlier, John, we are a, an online company, right? So, you know, everything's done through our own platform. Um, we don't file the, the claims for you, you know, and sometimes, you know, not everybody is a good fit for VA Claims Insider, right? Um, I've had a few older vests that, that just, you know, the, the technology, man, I'm, I'm one of those, if I didn't have two teenagers, I'd be so lost um, when it comes to uploading documents and, and doing things online. It's, it's um, you know, the generation gap, I, I think, for a lot of vets. Now, there's a lot of savvy ones out there, too, that, that teach me things on calls. I'm like, oh, man, I didn't know you could even do that. But, you know, it, it's a great company. It, it's all online. Um you know, VACI has done a great job of building out the platform, making it easier for veterans to upload documents and stuff for us to review. <clears throat> but I highly recommend and at least make that discovery call, you know, take the 30 minutes out of your day, see if it's something that is a fit for you. And if it is, they, the, the folks there, when you do that, that discovery call will get you signed up as an elite member. You'll get assigned your own coach. Um, and that's kind of where you're going to develop that strategy and talk with your coach about, you know, the path that you're going to go down. OK. Mm -hmm. And I saw a question that caught my eye, uh, Marcel, that has to apply. VA will not automatically offer to pay more money currently going this route myself. So that's a good thing. Another good thing that uh, we offer. So let's say you are service connected for PTSD. A lot of veterans who are service connected are potentially underrated. I've seen veterans that have 10% and 30% for, for PTSD, but they didn't know how to fully open up. Going back to what we were saying before, they probably were either too ashamed, too proud to really talk about the extent of the struggles that they were going through. And uh, they ended up uh, not being rated at the appropriate rating that they probably are experiencing. So, uh, a lot of vets who will go for an increase probably don't even know uh, what they want to talk about. A lot of them will just re-argue why they have PTSD again and pretty much waste uh, waste that claim um, and end up staying the same. So when you sign up and let's say you are underrated for PTSD, uh, we can have that talk and um, gradually, hopefully get you to open up about like the full extent of your PTSD and how it's affected your marriages, how it's affected your relationships with your children, your family, your friends, your hobbies. And the more you start uh, really connecting the dots, the more vulnerable you can be to the VA for your claim and get appropriate, appropriately rated. Um, because that, that happens quite a lot where, where vets just don't know how to talk about their condition or they're too uh, ashamed to talk about their condition that they end up just being severely underrated. That still doesn't take away the, um, the, the gravity of their condition. They're still going through jobs. They're still going through marriages. They're still going through substance abuse. And if you're going through all of that and you're only at 10%, 30%, then you definitely need to, um, need to have a good talk and, really start connecting the dots of what PTSD has done to your life. Yeah, great point. And this question from Marcel is good. You're right. The vet has to apply, right? Just because you have a 10% rating or a 30% rating for PTSD um, and you, and maybe you're going through therapy or counseling through the VA and it's gotten worse and worse. The VA is not just going to automatically up that, right? You have to go back into va.gov and you have to file for that increase. Um, or if you're going to file a supplemental claim and add additional medical evidence, then you have to do that. Okay. To get that increase um, raised. And, and you're right, John, I see that. I see that quite often, you know, where, where vets are low balled, you know, when it comes to, to mental health at 10 or 30, you know, the average that we normally see when it comes to mental health is 70%. That's about the average that, that we see, right? Um, I seen another question in there from, I can't remember who it was. Um, are buddy letters better than a nexus? I think somebody asked that. Yeah, is a buddy statement better than a nexus statement? 
Well, keep in mind, uh, Matthew, buddy statements are good, right? And I think, you know, the more the merrier that you have. Now, keep in mind the nexus letter, right? That's what's connecting it. Um, and a lot of times when they do that nexus letter, they're using a lot of medical literature um, that they research on that nexus letter. So um, I have had vets, you know, use buddy letters. Um, they probably look at them, weigh them a little bit differently, I, I think, depending on the, the rater that gets a hold of it. But yeah, I, I would say that I wouldn't say that, that they're better than a nexus letter um, because it's not it's not really that medical literature. That's what's connecting that. OK, um, and your buddy letter is good. Don't get me wrong. That's good. And I and I recommend that um, any PTSD event that you have a lot of buddies you know, that maybe we're in that same unit with you that, that <clears throat> were, maybe they're rated too at 70% at, at or hundred percent on PTSD, right? Where they can write a good detailed buddy statement. That's going to make that claim a lot stronger, but yeah, you're still going to need that nexus too. <clears throat> yeah. That's, that's a component that I'd say is like maybe step two or three, like step one for, for a claim is you need to have the, um, the verified event. And then once you know that you do have a verified event, um, you know, a nexus letter, Telemedica can can advocate for that, saying that, yeah, this event, this combat, this uh, this military sexual trauma, this um, this job that this person had on active duty, like this was the cause of it. And then buddy statements after that can provide a little bit more context uh, into that. But I would yeah, I would not say that buddy statements would outweigh a nexus statement in probative value. They just uh, enhance it once there's like a verified event that you know you can go off of. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and Stacy put a comment in there. The medical evidence is always going to outweigh the buddy letter. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, great points. All right. Well, let's. Um, if you want to, John, let's kind of uh, scroll through here and kind of see if we can find some some questions um, to answer these last few minutes of this class and and uh, roll from there. Heather Roach had a good one. So can you do a claim for PTSD if you are service connected for major depressive disorder? So that's very situational, Heather. Uh, that's definitely something that I would recommend um, talking to uh, or making a discovery call about. So for instance, in a hypothetical scenario, let's say you're rated at 30% for major depressive disorder, but turns out you did have um, maybe a, a combat deployment where that major depressive disorder has evolved into PTSD, then that 30% major depressive disorder technically could be increased to uh, PTSD with major depressive disorder at 50%, at 70%, at 100%, whatever that may be. So that's a very situational question. That's It's definitely a valid question. It does happen, but it just depends on what works for, for your case. So if any other veterans have that same question, definitely get on that discovery call and see if, uh, if it's worth pursuing. Yeah, good point. I see a question there from <clears throat> Edward Lee. <clears throat> Do you need a CMP exam for an increase for PTSD if you have a DBQ from a PhD for the increase? That's a great question, um, Edward. And it just, you know, sometimes it just depends, right? For the most part, I always tell all my veterans, plan on a CMP exam, okay? Um, because more than likely, you will draw that CMP exam when you file a, a new claim or an increase supplemental claim. Um, you'll 99% of the time probably draw that CMP exam. However, um, the DBQ is good. Um, and that's normally, you know, the, the form that they use when they when they do the CMP exam as well. Um, I've had a few veterans, very, very few um, that lucked out that that maybe got the DBQ um, from another doc completed and submitted that for their claim and <clears throat> and did not get a, a CMP exam scheduled. But that doesn't happen very often. It, it really doesn't. And and um, but. Sometimes it's good to have that, you know, um, as additional medical evidence. So it, my my opinion on that is, hey, plan on plan on the CMP exam because it's probably going to get scheduled um, whether you have the DBQ or not. But hopefully, if if not, that it, they use the DBQ and they use the medical evidence on there and and they uh, award you in your favor. Okay.
We got some good questions. Hey, Gerson, how's it going? Steve Adams, PTSD looking for 100. Steve, yeah, definitely. Uh, Vietnam was a very rough era to uh, to serve in, so absolutely go go for that uh, that increaser. Good luck to you. And Jeff Finney asked, um, intent to file if you don't have one on file, do so today. Absolutely, good point there, Jeff uh, Finney, for putting that in there, um, and that's important, right? And uh, you know, when you join VA Claims Insider and you go through our process. And, and you log into the Insider Portal, we have tasks on there that kind of show you the steps um, on what to do next, right? Having that intent to file is definitely something. If you don't have one, absolutely, go on va.gov today and get that intent to file submitted, right? If you're intending on filing a claim, you know, in the next month, next two months, after the holidays, you know, if you have that intent to file, submitted right but you don't you don't get your claim you know submitted until march april next year and then it takes the va another 90 to 120 days to to make a decision on that claim well heck you're going to get back paid you know back to that intent to file date so absolutely that's super important you know um to always have an open intent to file on va.gov so that when you do get ready to file and keep in mind that it's good for a year OK, so when you do that intent to file, that thing's good for one year. So, you you know, like I said, if, if you are gathering medical evidence or <coughs> you have some um, appointments coming up that you want to use that medical evidence to um, file when you when you submit that claim, man, that's going to that's going to help you. Right. And it's going to take that back pay back to that intent to file date. So if you don't have one, get one started today. Good advice there, Jeff. Mm hmm. So I'd say another another barrier that uh, some vets are uh, kind of apprehensive talking about PTSD is sometimes they say that they don't want to be on medication. And with that, your treatment is under your control. So I've been getting treated for um, my PTSD at the VA going on uh, almost eight years now. Wow. Um, there's times where I realize that medication just has not worked for me. And I'll let them know that, like, I, I really don't want to do medication. Talk therapy works best for me. So uh, any veterans are apprehensive about taking medications, um, that is under your control. So if you want to do something just like talk therapy, you'd be really, really uh, impressed with just how much talk therapy can actually make a difference. So um, don't let that be an obstacle when you are uh, trying to get some assistance. There's there's several methods to to treat PTSD, not just medication. So that if that's uh, something that that's a hang up for some people, know that uh, that there's other options. Yeah, great, great point. And and uh, another question there I see from um, Chris Sorrentini. Hopefully I didn't butcher your name up too bad there. <clears throat> I did the discovery call, but it was primarily just talking about getting into the program. Maybe maybe it was just because I was in a hurry. Am I able to get a meeting going to review my current ratings and what is going on with my body currently? Yeah, Chris, once you – and that discovery call, um, keep in mind that those are fairly quick, right? And I, I think um, once you sign up, right, with, VA, <clears throat> with VACI as an elite member, that's when you're going to get assigned your coach, okay? So once you get signed up, um, you'll get the emails um, sent over to you with um, the process on getting logged into the insider portal. You get your assigned coach um, assigned to you. That's when you'll um, get that strategy call set up with your coach um, to kind of go through, comb all through your stuff um, and, and come up with the best game plan for you. Okay. So, you know, keep in mind that <clears throat> the discovery calls are good. It's something that, that we do here just to see if, if a VACI is a good fit for you, right? You know, sometimes people don't have maybe access to, you know, being able to, to upload documents or access to a computer all the time um, and things like that. So, you know, if it is a good fit, it's something you think you can benefit from, by all means, get signed up, you know, um, get assigned your, your coach directly and 
get that strategy session scheduled and that's when they'll start digging in the weeds and coming up with the strategy specifically for you okay Elmer Reyes has a good question. 28-year Navy vet, I was given two codes for PTSD and adjustment anxiety disorder. Will I be given two separate ratings or will be wrapped up into one overall ratings for PTSD? So it will be wrapped into one rating for PTSD. You can only have one mental health rating um, claimed on your disability uh, list. The VA won't uh, rate, for instance, like PTSD and depression. You won't get separate ratings for those, but they'll pay you uh, at the one rate because um, a lot of those conditions can have overlapping symptoms. The VA won't pay for overlapping symptoms, but it will add an on. So let's say, going back to my earlier example, if you had major depressive disorder at 30, but then over the course of the years, your mental health got worse and now you have um, PTSD because of something that did happen from the military, it would change to PTSD with major depression. So you could see that that addition in there. Like mine says PTSD with major depression uh, on mine as well. So um, it won't be individual ratings. It will be uh, one rating incorporating both. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I see a, <clears throat> I see a, a question or a statement in there from, from Keith. Um, I was on a ship in 1986 when the space shuttle crashed. We picked up the nose cone debris from the crash field. This impacted me over the years. Didn't realize it until recently, last year or so. Would that be a valid claim? Absolutely, Keith. And I think, um, you know, that's kind of one of those things, right, when you talk about, you know, the PTSD combat versus the non-combat um, things that we talked about earlier in this class. Um, if it's something that you're suffering with, and I can definitely see that, right? It's kind of like the, the vet that I had that witnessed the tsunami, you know, in Japan, when that, that devastation hit over there, if it's impacting you, yes, by all means, right. Um, you were in the service, you, you, uh, responded to that incident out there. So if it's affecting you, yes, get, join up. If you're not a member here at VA Claims Insider, get signed up, um, you know, with us, get that assigned coach assigned to you and let him help you or her help you kind of guide you through that process. But absolutely, if if, uh, if you witness that and you respond to that and it affects you, then absolutely. Excellent. Let's see here. Kind of thumbing through these questions here. Jerry Burton, congratulations. 100% on PTSD and homebound. Thank you for VACI for all the great info. Congratulations, sir. It's very, um, it's very exciting to hear that a veteran was uh, – recognized for for their service that way <clears throat> yeah absolutely so mark nichols can you file a new claim if you have an appeal pending uh, a court date and a docket with the va judge so if it's already in the bva which in that situation if it's waiting to speak to a judge you can't file a supplemental claim or a high level review claim because it's already tied up pending uh, a judge's decision so um that might be something that uh, needs a nexus letter or something. It wouldn't be something that a coach could help you out with. So um, that answers that question. And Jeanette, is there a wait to get a coach? Is VACI booked way out? So there's no wait to get a coach. Every coach has a, a team of assistants to help you out. So um, if you are signing up for VA Claims Insider, you will be uh, – given an introductory email and it'll have a list of items to gather. So when you do have your strategy session with us, um, you'll have everything that we need to review to make sure that we can come up with the best strategy for your case. So if you do sign up for us and when one of our assistants uh, reaches out, they speak on our behalf. They are, uh, they are trusted as assistants. They have direct lines to us and, um, you can go ahead and, and work with them, work with that email, get all those documents gathered uh, as quickly as you can, and we can get you booked for your strategy session. But no, they're, they're, we're not um, running out of coaches anytime soon. That's right. And we just hired a big group of, of more coaches. So we're going to have coaches galore. All right. So we're here to take care of you guys. And, uh, you know, VA Claims Insider is, is uh, really growing. A lot, of, a lot of new vets joining up with VA Claims Insider. Um, so... We're, uh, we're adapting and, and overcoming and hiring new coaches here. So 
you know, we, we take a, we'll take all y'all on that haven't signed up yet, you know, and, and to talk about the, the VACI's elite member program, just a, a little bit again, you know, um, you're going to have that, that one-on-one coaching, you know, with your coach. Now keep in mind, like your coach, when you get assigned, your coach has several hundreds of veterans that they're working with. Right. Um, <clears throat> so they're pretty busy too, but you are going to have that one-on-one coaching ability. Um, you know, and, and most of my vets that, that reach out to me during the day with questions or texts or emails, however it is, they're, they're trying to get a hold of me. I, I normally, if not 100% of the time, respond back the same day. It may not be within 30 seconds of you texting me. However, I will get you back and answer um, that same day, okay? And, and most of the coaches here um, are pretty much probably the same way. You know, we're here to take care of you. It is a confusing process um, if, if you're not familiar with it. So that's what your coach is here for. Um, also going to help you. Um, your coach is going to help you with with CMP prep stuff. You know, we have videos that have CMP prep tips, things like that, um, that that are definitely going to help you through the CMP exam, right? Because that's that's huge, John. That's like that's the biggest piece of the pie, right? Mm-hmm. You got to go into that CMP exam, and you got to let it out, and you got to talk about those symptoms, and you got to talk about it all because that's a big big step in the process, right? And if you go in there. You know, and, and and your coach will talk to you once you get signed up and you get your claim filed with your coach and, and you guys start prepping for that CNP exam. That's key and that's huge, you know, and we have so much great information out there on on the CNP exams. Uh, it looks like they threw up um, my my link there um, if you want to get signed up um, for me as your coach. I think that's the link right there. So. Um, another thing that you get with the elite membership program are access to all the classes that we offer every single day um, of the week. So coffee with coaches, that's a big one. CMP prep classes, elite Q&A question class where you can just come on. There'll be different coaches um, doing the co- uh, the classes each week, but um, sometimes it's good to join those those classes, right? <clears throat> with other coaches because sometimes you get a different perspective, right, from uh, from one coach to another. Um, but that's another good thing that you that you get. Um, the Mental Health Monday class, that's huge. That's a great one, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, they, they talk about – because mental health, right, that's a <clears throat> a very high-value claim, and it's, it's um, one that a lot of vets file for. And that Mental Health Monday class really talks about – um, mental health, the 31 mental health symptoms, how to talk about them and things like that. So lots of great things, lots of great benefits um, on becoming an elite member. So we hope that if you haven't signed up with us, that that you take that time, get signed up, get your coach and, and, and get you going. Even if you've been denied in the past, it's not a problem. That's what your coach is there for, okay, to kind of help you guide you, whether you need an HLR, a higher level review, um, a supplemental claim, a nexus letter, more medical evidence, things like that. That's where your coach is going to help you out, okay? Yes, sir. And I just wanted to get to one more. Patrick Robinson, I've had six amputations and over 30 operations, all connected by nexus letters from doctors from an incident that happened in service but has been turned down. I highly say go for that discovery call, sir. Let us see if there's a that event that we can verify and get that recognized because that that does seem um, uh, substantial of what's happened to to your life. Yeah, Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Thanks for sharing that, Patrick. And and hopefully if if you get signed up with us that that we can get you going down the right path. Okay. But anyway, we're at the top of the hour. Thank you all so much for taking the time out of your your Wednesday to to join us here. for this Facebook live class and, and uh, great questions from everybody today. Thank you, John. It was a pleasure doing the class with you today and uh, look forward to, to getting you all signed up if you're not members already and uh, helping you through this process. Likewise, Chuck. You vets have a good day.